Hey there! I'm Sarah A. Chrisman, the author of The Tales of Chetsamoka and other books about the Victorian era, and today I'm going to tell you about eminent Victorian cats. Cats wander through the tales of Chetsamoka the way cats in general wander through the human world, mostly preoccupied with their own affairs and occasionally stealing a scene when it suits them. As Victorian writer Helen M. Winslow observed, Dogs and horses are our slaves, cats never. This does not prove them without affection, as some people seem to think. On the contrary, it proves their peculiar dignity and self-respect. In the Victorian era, a number of famous writers were especially drawn to cats' particular dignity and self-respect, and they found their cats to be a great source of inspiration, even while questing paws could wreak havoc with one's penmanship. The poet Ella Wheeler Wilcox, perhaps best known for her line, Laugh and the World Laughs With You, had a number of feline companions to mingle their purrs with her laughter. Her favorite was a cat named Banjo, who used to sit in a drawer in her desk and supervise her writing. Whenever she asked Banjo for a hug, he would sit up on his hind legs and put both his front paws around her neck, hugging her tight. The New York newspaper The Sun had a whole succession of office cats who managed their journalists and frequently shredded copy which didn't meet their standards. The strictest of these feline editors earned himself the official name The Mutilator. Besides his editorial duties, the mutilator was chief of pest control in the Sun office, and he was particularly known for his skill in dealing with cockroaches. Hopping over to a different publication, we find a cat in charge of the magazine Harper's Bazaar, who doubtless would have looked down his refined nose at the Sun's rough-and-tumble mutilator. Muff, whose human servant Mary L. Booth was the editor of Harper's Bazaar, wore an imported lace collar and presided over Harper's Harper Bazaar's weekly literary salons. Ever the hospitable host, Muff would frequently contribute to the refreshments at these literary salons through donations of mice from his private hunting preserves. Mark Twain's love of cats is legendary, and Francis Baudelaire couldn't pass a kitty on the street without petting it. So many of the Victorian era's literary lions were ardent cat lovers, it would be impossible to name them all. As for the greatest visual art of Victorian cats, there were a number of beautiful feline paintings in the late 19th century, but ultimately my vote would go to the charming cat drawings and cartoons of Louis Wayne. Louis Wayne not only drew cats for the great delight of countless humans, he was the president of committee for the National Cat Club of England. He judged various cat shows, and he was an honorary member of an American cat club in Chicago. And as long as I'm on the subject of cat shows, I'd like to point out an interesting little side note. Although spaying and neutering didn't become very common until fairly well into the 20th century, the procedures were around earlier. The official rules for cat shows in the late Victorian era specifically allowed spayed and neutered cats to compete for prizes, although for obvious reasons they couldn't be entered on the stud book. It's also interesting to note that the breed standards for cats in the 19th century were a lot less extreme than what certain breeds morphed into later. Persian cats of the Victorian era were mostly judged by the luxuriance of their fur. The short noses and squished faces we associate with Persians today were developed through selective breeding throughout the 20th century. 19th century Siamese cats were so different from the current breed standard that they might not even recognize their kinship. In fact, the modern Siamese has gotten so extreme that back in the 1990s, certain breeders started reverting to the old standard and produced a cat called the Thai, which more closely resembles the traditional Siamese that would have been familiar to the Victorians. Whether you're in service to a purebred cat with a wall full of ribbons, or to a free-ranging stray who looked over all the world before deciding that you're the human servant for her, there's something very special about being owned by a cat. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a nice thumbs up 
and remember to tell your friends about my books. Happy reading!